In this episode of Learning to Play Osprey Games Zone Alpha, we are going to discuss the solo play rules. When looking at the solo play rules, you'll recognize that there's actually an option one and an option two. First, we're going to discuss solo play option one. Now, the first rule is to limit the mission area to three by three. As you can see on the board I've set up, it's a FLGS four by four, but if you'll notice, right where that fence line is, along that uh, sidewalk and along the sidewalk by the park in front of that building over, that actually carves out to a three by three. So I just set up the narrative of my team is leaving the secure compound and heading out into this three by three zone. Now, the next second recommendation is to have a crew of four members, all of veteran quality. And you can see I've got my four guys lined up there. Now you'll want to increase the number of hotspots uh, to threat level times two plus one. So in this example, I'm going to do a threat level two. Therefore, the hotspots would be five. And you see I've got uh, the blue crystals scattered everywhere. And I'm including my mission objectives in that. And that's for a very particular reason. Recommendation number four, start the mission with one hotspot triggered. And I've done that. You see I've deployed some zombies. Uh, and they're already out. And since they weren't uh, triggered by anyone, they're all deployed right around the hotspot. And I made sure to put it within 12 inches of my crew to prevent the crew from just standing back and shooting them all down. At least give them a little bit of risk there. Now, recommendation number five, split your mission objective. Um, and the idea is to make it like a two-part. So what I've done here is I've got these computer terminals. Uh, there's four of them around. And then there's three hot spots pretty much sitting along the path to all the uh, mission objectives. The reason I did that is I don't actually know which mission objective I need to get to. So in my scenario, I need to get to a mission objective, trigger it, and then successfully interact with it, and then I'll roll. And depending on the roll, I'll either get the data I need and have to get to the truck in the corner to exit the zone. So you can see all the mission objectives are far away from my exit. But the idea is like on the first objective, I'll need a six up. On the second objective, I need a five up. So my chances of actually finding the data I need increase as I go down. Or I might just roll six and find it on the first one and escape. But that's why I set it up that way. I've actually thought about just leaving a herd of zombies around the truck. Uh, just to add some challenge to the escape. Now, recommendation number six, increase the salvage values. Um, so add 25% to the salvage and the second roll to the equipment table. And the seventh recommendation, bump the term limit by one. So especially since um, we're playing threat level two, we've got veterans, you're probably gonna need a little bit of time, especially since, for example, I've got the mission objectives spread out everywhere. To cover that much ter terrain, I'd have to basically split my guys, which would make them weaker to try to clear fast enough to get to the truck. All right, let's cover option two. So in discussing option two, I'm gonna leave my board and my scenario the same as I was for option one. But the idea here is, um, notice the zombies aren't pre-triggered. That's not an option two. Option two was actually made by a guy named Soren from Bloodbeard's Garage. And the author of Zona Alpha liked his recommendation so much, he decided to run with it and publish it out with his permission. All right, so in the option two, when you trigger a zone hostile, they're no longer trapped in that 12 inch bubble. So they can go wherever they want to following the rules of engagement. And recommendation two is an attack on sight. The zone hostiles will attack players' models as soon as they get line of sight. And this makes them much more serious because whenever they're triggered, whenever they see you, um, they can chase you anywhere on the board. And considering 
in my scenario, I've got a crisscross all over the board before I can escape. I could actually run a situation where I could have a large mutant or a group of bandits constantly pinning me as I'm trying to move around uh, and escape before the turn limit runs up. Now, recommendation three is called Introduce a Little Ac Anarchy. So this allows uh, the zone hostiles to interrupt your turn. So instead of going last in initiative, after the first uh, player model, so one of my guys uh, takes an action, you roll a d10. On a 10, all spawn creatures or enemies will take their turn. Uh, after the second player model, if nothing happened er earlier, all enemies will act on a 9-up, and so on, 8-up, and so on, decreasing until all the models have gone. And if, the, and if you didn't accidentally trigger them to go, they'll go uh, at the end. Now, this does make for a more involved game uh, with the chance of interrupting your activation sequence, especially if you've activated a lot of them and there's a zone hostiles roaming all everywhere, uh, you could end up where mutants and bandits and zombies are chasing all over the board as you try to escape. That concludes our review of the Zona Alpha solo play rules. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.